I know you guys wasn't just looking at my aft. I know you guys wasn't just looking at my aft. All right, looking at my transom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys missed uh, what? You missed the last episode? You missed the last part of the build series? Oh man, shame on you. Stop looking at my aft. Stop looking at my aft. <laughs> yeah, the last uh, last episode. Let me fill you in a little bit. We put the deck strips on. All right, got it all framed up in the first episode. Uh, second episode, we put the control plate on, the the tunnel strips, the sump bottom, sump sides, and the nose piece here. Okay. Uh, today we should start installing the servo mount, the motor mount removing parts of the bulkhead and skinning the boat okay uh she's starting to look good hey y'all looking at my aft again <laughs> stick around stick around you guys big b here with ironclad rc <laughs> all right so so before i get any farther with the boat build okay um I want to kind of put my electronics in it and just do a dry fit. What I like to do, I put my hardware in the boat. I just set it in the boat. All right, when I'm just trying to figure out weight distribution, I put, you know, my turn fin is going to be about right here. So I'll set that there with the weight. My motor in the motor mount position. All right, my battery and my ESC where it's going to be. I just threw my servo in there. I can kind of get a feel for what the boat's going to feel like when once i start adding electronics and stuff okay so as of now with my with my weight distribution the way it is all right with a 3s battery 1300 milliamp 3s 30c pack and a dynamite 30 amp esc my weight di distribution is right here right behind this bulkhead C all right right behind the turn fin so that is perfect it's a little heavy it's a little heavy and I'm wondering if the damn boat will even float but it don't have to float it just needs to fly all right and it's so it's such a small boat and with a, this 30 amp ESC opposed to this mystery ESC this little boat's gonna freaking haul tail all right I've run these mystery ESCs. They're great. They're fast. They work. But this dynamite ESC, you can get your 24, Blackjack 24, up to like 40 miles an hour with that ESC. So I I would just, I can only imagine what this boat's going to do with that ESC and this Outrunner motor. All right. Now, if I don't like that Outrunner motor or if it's too heavy up front, I can run this little 2440 in this boat. All right. I, that's just the motor mount I made for my recoil, but um, it's actually lighter than this this Outrunner. Okay, a, a lot lighter than that than that Outrunner. But I need weight up front. Okay, I need weight up front in this boat. So I think this Outrunner motor is going to scream in this thing on 3s. All right. Now I know Dr. Jet told me to you know he suggested running the boat. 2s and i will i will i'm gonna run it on 2s but this is big b with ironclad rc and uh that's what we're gonna do right there we're gonna fly all right so we're gonna run on 2s then we're gonna run it on on 3s all right look at that boom 4s <laughs> uh you want i won't get a long run time but it'll be fun. You guys will enjoy it. I'm sure somebody's going to say, oh, man, what? 4S in that little boat? Uh, well, that's what y'all are here for, entertainment. And I, and I try to entertain you guys with more power, you know? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have some fun with this boat. I got an idea of what the weight distribution's like. All right, I've already got I've got my, my motor mount installed, Okay. Um, I've got my servo mount installed. You guys see it right there. See the servo mount? I kind of modified my servo mount. Um, I actually made a whole new one just because I like modifying my boats. You know, um, I kept it in the original position that the, the the build called for. I just modified it, made it lighter. Let's go ahead and show you guys this before I took it off. I use some Windex, like the directions, well, zip, same thing, for um, a sprayed zip on the bottom, on the convex side, and I put these little, 
they're heavy little brass and wood little planers mini wood planers on my spots and bottoms to try to help get that forward curve all right it really kind of curved a little bit more than what i wanted it but this is really what i wanted to show you this is for the hatch all right the hatch and i got it kind of curved so that it matches the curve of the boat all right first we're going to glue up our non-trips that's on the side of the boat right here all right they glue on the side what i did is i took a ruler i hope this is right i took a ruler and put it right on those bulkheads and kind of marked the same angle on the back of my sponson right here so that i can get a good angle or a good reference anyway when i put my balsa on okay so i'm gonna go ahead and glue this up i would definitely keep a few clothes pins around or clips of some kind so you can clip things in place i'm basically going to use this as a reference see this right here so i get all this right when i glue on the side here this non-trip you got me Sure they match up on both sides. Yeah. That's pretty good. Alright, now I'll take the transom piece off. Take my transom piece off so I can glue up the back back here. See how flimsy this is? You see that right there? Very flimsy, so I'm gonna run a piece of uh, balsa in here just to kind of strengthen it up a little bit it's time to glue in right behind these bulkheads and I went ahead and installed temporarily installed my turn fan base all right um, I'm kind of curious if this is supposed to be flush to the top of the bulkhead here like that if it is there needs to be a little bit of curve in the in the non trip and it didn't specify in the directions. And I'm wondering if that curve would aid or help in the performance at all in the boat. Because the deck has got to go into the top. I know it, it's supposed to actually meet up to this. There's like a little fin back here. But... All right. Yeah, if you're questionable about an aspect of your boat build, you know, whether it's a, uh, a hydroplane like this or a catamaran, I mean, anything, you know, grab the piece that, that goes on top and see how it goes on the boat, you know? So it definitely needs to go flat on top of the bulkhead there. And I guess we're going to put a little curve in it. Or cut cut it so I think I'm gonna put a curve in it I think it'll look cool all right because that needs to go flat on top of that bulkhead like that all right so all right that's gonna go like that okay oh, that's gonna look wicked cool y'all oh man that's gonna look cool <laughs> so I'm just cutting a little strip off my parts tree here this is great scrap wood for adding structure to your boats you know so i'm gonna use that on the inside back of my bulkhead and i'll probably end up using it here too to add some structure to the to this non-trip all right so i want to get this curve this is going to be a curve right here all right so i want to find where the top part of the curve starts so i'm putting my adjustable ruler on using this step right here as a reference all right right there a little assistance from my wife she's going to hold the boat in place and i'm going to mark the same on this side hopefully so so i need to put a little piece of wood right 
right there. I'll put, just tack a little piece of wood on here so I can use the wood to get my curve right. Just a little drop will do. Alright. I'll put it to my finger. Alright, now I can get this curve the same on both sides so it looks identical. Thank you, honey. Yep, there's my helper. My helper, and I got a new helper on the way. <laughs> Little baby boy coming. He's due today. <laughs> you ready, baby? You ready for him to come? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's ready for him to come. All right. All right. So let me get back to work. Thank you, honey. Some framework here so I can get that curve right. All right. Since I'm going to curve both sides, I want it to look the same. All right. So now I can glue. I'm going to go ahead and push this down and glue. Get the best view for you. Sorry, you guys. Sorry. All right. So I'm going to tack this guy in place. And then I'll move my, my turn fin base. All right. I got a little, little curve to it. All right. I've all, like I cut these strips out while I go. We're going to run these strips on the inside here so we can have a little bit more structure in the boat. All right, so let's go ahead and take and tack this guy down so it's flush. Sorry about the camera angle, you guys. I'm, I'm doing my best here. All right, so we got that one. The same. Okay. And this side. Oh, damn, Vinny, I see what you mean. Ooh. Move my finger to it. No. So I took a little bit of super glue, and glued that little little chip off. I glued it back on. Now I'm going to back it with some baking powder. All right, that'll glue it up real quick for you, so your finger don't get stuck to it. My finger got stuck to it right there when I was pushing that curve down. <laughs> And it pulled it right off, man. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we got that fixed. Let's go ahead and do the same thing to this side. I'm gonna use this thick, this thick glue right here. All right, and we'll pour some of this in it for backer. Okay. Now let's kind of mix this up in that wet glue so it's solid. Baking powder. It. it, it Basically, will dry your your glue instantly. And give it some structure back there. Look, yeah. See, I'm gonna have to sand a little bit off of that piece. I had the glue back on there. But my buddy Vinny, he did the same darn thing. I see what you mean now, Vinny. That's why he's using. He decided to use a piece of um, birch plywood for this to strengthen it up so that that don't break off. See how it's gonna be a little thin right here. Once the top's on, that little fin, and it's going to be thin. Fiber, fiberglass veil to reinforce my epoxy on this boat because it'll be light. It'll give it some integrity and uh, lightweight, lightweight. So I cut this balsa wood to basically go over my transom like that, and I'll cut it flush off on the transom. All right, but uh, changing it up is going to change up something here then it's going to change up something there down the, down the road so you have to take that into consideration when you when you're adding wood onto a boat like this you know what i'm saying it's going to change it all up so make sure you do your your figuring you know uh, make sure it's not going to mess anything up down the road and if it does mess something up make sure you 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 cut the wood or design it to where it can be fixed or removed or just sanded off or sanded flush to, to match what you need on the build later on. All 
right i've noticed i've noticed if you have like a a place where you need to like hold it tight all right and you don't want something to stick to it these bottles of ca the outside of the bottle for some reason this plastic don't stick to the ca all right so you can use that to you know push down your wood and you don't have to worry about your finger sticking to sticking to the wood all right use your bottle of ca it helps that's what broke this piece off in the first place was my finger got stuck to the wood with the ca on there All right, so that's reinforced now, okay? Now I feel comfortable working on the boat. I didn't want to cut a piece of, well, for one, I don't have a piece of plywood to cut. This, all this right here is flimsy, but I can, whenever you epoxy the inside and then epoxy the outside of the boat, it'll make it hard. But I really wanted to, um, I wanted to strengthen up this wing right here, this little winglet that comes off the, off the transom because if I didn't I know I'd break it off running the boat handling the boat you know so it's doubled up now all right so I feel a little bit more comfortable about this I was worried about that the whole time so hopefully that'll work they add weight to the boat so just be conscientious of that when you when you're building your boat you don't want too much weight that's why I chose to use, to stick with the balsa and just add a little strip of balsa. Also, adding a lot of glue to the boat adds weight. You got to figure, look, I'm, this bottle was 5 ounces, 0.5 ounces. 0.5 ounces of glue, 14 grams. I've already put 14 grams of weight, uh, glue in the boat, basically. Alright, 14 grams. That adds up. Especially with this boat, I want to use bigger electronics in it. Some, you know, eventually, eventually, use big electronics in it, and I've definitely got to be conscientious of my weight. You know, it's going to be going fast, and I don't, I don't want the boat to splinter apart at 40 mile an hour when I'm run, when I'm running this thing. You know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Man, she's looking good. Looking good looking good all right so i'm actually going to add a little piece here and one right right here all right on both sides Yeah, so, so the reason why I added these supports, because uh, Dr. Jet had somebody run into them, you know, and I was hoping that this would help if I hit something or whatever. You guys all know I'm not the best freaking driver in the world. <laughs> Alright, so I've got my little planer right here. My little small planer. Just going to plane this edge down to match on my bulkhead right here on both sides get these little planers from Harbor Freight they're freaking awesome you get three of them in a pack get a scraper a planer and then a, a straight edge all right pretty cheap not very expensive but they uh when you don't use them all the time but when you do when you do need them they come in handy you know they come in handy i got mine sharp as a darn razor Another little quick tip, this is a sanding board I have. It's a flat piece of plywood that I use to sharpen up my hobby knives. I don't even buy hobby blades, I just sharpen them up, man. Put some 3-in-1 oil on that bad boy. 
planers. This is really for my planers. So what I do is I sharpen up my planers all the time. My big planers, my little planers on this. Yeah, these little planers from Harbor Freight are pretty cool, man. You just gotta sharpen them. They're not sharp from the from from uh, like out the box. But once you get these things sharp, man, they uh they're all right. They're all right. I sharpened it, so I need to set it set it again. This is a scraper. You use it to scrape stuff like straight away. Just scraping the glue off. Okay, this is a very important part. Now I'm gonna sand it. Don't want to sand the laser markings off of this off this wood. I just want to sand this piece. You know where to cut the wood. You don't want to sand the if you know, if you're hitting this this dark part of the wood right here, you know you're hitting it. So like that part right there, I kind of hit it just a little bit, trying to get it flat with it. You know. flat you guys real flat don't want no dipty doos in this bad boy it's the ride pad I really would like to do this off camera you know so I'm not rushing it but I'll show you guys how to do it here You use your bottle to push down super glue, not your finger, so your finger don't stick to the wood. It won't stick to this plastic bottle. All right. See, I'm checking it with that straight edge right there. Sorry. About the video and angles and stuff, man. I'm trying to work work the boat, make sure the boat's right. The video comes second. <laughs> All right, so she looks flat. I'm using my straight edge to push it down. All right. Takes a second for this birch to birch uh, glue up. So you have to wait a little longer for this birch to stick. Balsa, it sticks right away. Balsa, balsa, like it just sucks it up. This birch takes a minute. So give it some time to kick off before you pull your straight edge apart. Oh yeah. Look at there. Checking our dead rise right here. Make sure that's on point. Okay, that looks good. Check it with our, let's check the secondary ride pad with our straight edge. Alright, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is put a little little glue on there okay, and hold it down on the straight edge. That way I'm not warping it, putting a bow in it, holding it down in the wrong place or anything. You know? Getting even pressure on it with that straight edge. Like I said, it takes a second for that basswood to basswood uh, to dry up, kick off. So I'm gonna skip through this part while I'm holding it down, you know, for time's sake. Use the sanding block kind of as a straight edge, like we did on the top part. <laughs> I 
All right, now let's check it with our straight edge since we got both of them glued up right here. I don't see no gaps. Looks good there. Okay, got a little gap right there. A little gap right there. Maybe that'll pull out when I start bending this over. So let's push some pressure on this front part and see if that pushes that gap out. And it did. All right, good deal. Good deal. Good deal. All right, so. Put some pressure on it with my hand here. I'm gonna use this thick, thick glue. All right. Putting the pressure on the front part of the bend, not on the back part, because if you, if you glue it and you put pressure back here, you see how it bends it up. All right. So we want to put pressure on this front part of the bend. I got these doublers here. I got these doublers on there for a reason, so I can glue this off all right like so a little bit of baking powder to speed it up on that on that bulkhead and I'll keep pressure on it on the tip until it kicks off I'll fast forward through this part all right but I didn't put no pressure back here so it don't do that number there you know what I'm saying Good, y'all. It's looking good. All right. All right, so I'm using my hobby knife here just to scrape any excess glue off these ride pads so we don't have any unnecessary high spots or anything. Oh yeah, she's starting to look like something now, y'all. Huh? Yeah. Got our spots and bottoms on. Got our non-trips on. Okay. Got everything like planed out, sanded out, reinforced. All right. Um, my sponsons are flat. Check it out. Both of them are flat. Looking good. Looking good. So now I've got the sponson side. All right. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I kind of sanded a little beveled edge on there so it fits up against the spots and bottom all right and it kind of sandwiches in there i have a little gap right there for some reason and uh, that's why i actually it was a lot bigger than that before i sanded it was a lot bigger a lot bigger and i sanded that little bevel and it actually closed it up so it might sand a little bit more off here on the back and then on the front side boom boom all right let's see if that closed it up yeah yeah nice and finger like i did last time i ripped the whole side off <laughs> all right see how quick that balsa kicks off real quick all right so I'm going to push it down while I still have a chance. Tuck it in. I'm going to try to hold the whole front end in place while I... That's not the glue. All right. While I glue this part. Glue my finger to it. Oh man, I really wanted that to tuck in there. Oh, it's not tucking in. Shit. Oh, that sucks. Too late right now. Alright, I'm gonna hold my hold the front in place. Okay. Little drop. Little drop. Alright. Oh yeah. 
So we're going to be epoxying the inside and the outside of this boat. So that'll, oh, there we go. You want a sharp edge out here, that'll displace the water better. It'll come off that, the bottom part of the sponson better and your boat will be faster. Don't stick to this bottle, like I said, man. That's the best tip I can give you guys if you're having trouble with your fingers sticking to the wood with this super glue. Use your bottle, and the, the CA don't stick to this bottle. Like I said, that's the only good tip I can give you guys. Like a, this is my first boat build, so I'm learning. So what I do, once I put that bacon powder on it, and it's like the gaps are filled in or whatever, you know, it's, it's glued together, I go in and sand 99% of that, that dust off, you know, the excess bacon powder. I try to do it right after I, after I, I apply the bacon powder so it's not, so it comes off and sands easy, sands off easy. I don't want all the extra weight in the boat, you know. And it just makes it look better after you sand it. <sighs> okay. As I build the boat, I'll sand it. You know, like sanding these strips flush. Um, rounding off this nose piece right here. Give it a nice transition. You know, any anything that looks funky, I'll, I'll hit it with my sandpaper as I'm building it. Uh, trying to make it as streamlined as possible so I don't have to do it all at the end I sand it off all that all that bacon powder I put up here you know I got 80% of it off you know I wanted to leave it up here it adds some strength and stuff to it You know, like I said before, I'm really in, I'm in, I'm in love with this freaking little boat. I really am. And she is looking good, y'all. She's looking good. Check it out. Yeah, there you go. 91 grams. 91 grams. Alright, 91. With the bottom, the sponsons, the non trip some, everything, except for the top. 91 grams. 91 grams I knew I was gonna run into this problem whenever I doubled up this piece of uh, balsa right here whenever I go to put this top side piece on here I'm actually um, gonna have to kind of mod mod it out mod it out a little bit maybe sand a little bit off this edge right here um, to get it to push up right because I, I doubled it up so I don't break that off so um, but I'm not ready for that yet. Our next step is to glue up our transom doubler here. All right. I had to remember I, I was trying to think ahead. And I made it where it would go over this transom doubler so that that fin piece right there don't break off. Go ahead and glue this guy right here on tonight so it'll be dried for um, tomorrow. Okay, so I can start epoxy in the inside. Oh, I put it on the wrong side. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I guess I'll leave this part in there in the video so you guys will see that. <laughs> I could have like a whole freaking blooper reel for this build process right here. <laughs> Some of it I cut out of the video, but I could I could run a whole blooper reel. <laughs> from this build for sure Oops, things that I've messed up and had to fix <laughs> I 
All right, so let's try this again. All right, so we got to make sure it's on the right side. <laughs> Dr. Jet, you're probably watching like, oh, Big B, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, stop, stop, stop. Oh, too late. <laughs> yeah, I swear I could have a whole darn blooper reel for this video. Whole nother video, just the bloopers of things I've messed up. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so I'm gonna make sure it's flush with this bottom aft center center plate here. Make sure it's flush with that. Close clips, whatever, close pins, whatever the hell you call them. Okay, and I'll clean those screw holes out with an old piece of wood. Got a, a quick tip for you guys before I let you go. All right. Um, Clothes pins. I like using clothes pins. They're cheap. You can get them anywhere. You get hundreds of them for for a dollar. But uh, see how that won't clip on there? Okay. It's not it's not opening wide enough. All right. So what I do is I'll cut this part right here off. All right. So I'll cut this part right here. All that I'm coloring in, and I can you can cut this part right here off. All right. And it'll look like, here's one I've already done, it'll look like that, alright? Now see how much wider it'll, it'll clip something on, okay? So this is a, a regular clothespin trying to clip the transom. Here's a modified clothespin trying to clip the transom. Also, also, if that don't get you enough, you can take the back side off right here, alright? See where I've taken it off on the back side where you actually clip it? Take some off that side, that'll give you more opening ability as well so now your a regular clothespin that only clip like a quarter inch piece will now clip a three quarter inch piece all right you can also like take your dremel and like put like a little notch right here or or a, like a diagonal notch with your dremel so you can clip rounded pieces or corners um, anything like that so big b's tip of the day yeah yeah you guys it's the next day my transom's all glued up i just kind of worked on the top side here just kind of getting it sanded and prepped up remember i added this piece right here and i just kind of took my little little planer you know and scribed a line down this top side non-trip um wall right here and just took my planer and and planed it out on both sides so i got it to fit perfect I also sanded this the side of my sponson. It was sticking up, um, you know, on the side right there. So I sanded, or well, I planed it. I planed it down with my planer to down to the the bulkheads, so that the top of the boat is supported by the bulkhead. All right. Um, I added a lot of little pieces of balsa, you know, just barely tacked it in there. All right for extra strength like this guy here these little like toothpick sized pieces of balsa just to add and make me feel better you know like right here there was a seam that wasn't supported by a bulkhead so i added just a small piece of uh balsa there and back here just um there wasn't a seam i just wanted to kind of structure it structurally uh give it some integrity you know what i'm saying um i, I build my boats ironclad and i can't just not I can't just build it like the directions called. I have to, I have to modify it. I have to build it the way I want to build it, and uh, I, that's what you guys should do. Ironclad your boat. Build it the way you want to build it. You know, um, I've been sanding on it, just kind of rounding off edges up here. You know, and uh, she's she's looking good. She's looking good. I just got off the phone with. Um, the builder, the the designer of this boat, Doctor Jet. He's saying that uh, the boat with it totally uh skinned out and epoxied it should weigh around 175 grams without electronics so 91 without the top side i think we're on we're on track you guys we're on track um yeah this stuff right here don't need to be done this little things like this on your boats but if you want to add a little bit of of structure a little bit uh put a little bit of you into the boat do it do it you know uh thanks for watching dr jet's 120 hydroplane uh, build series. Thanks for watching. We're going to actually epoxy the inside of the boat next video and add foam to it to the insides of these uh, sponsons. So ring the bell. We'll see you guys next time. Big B here.
with Ironclad RC. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel.